You ever have those days you know you're fishing the next day and you get like three hours of sleep? That was me yesterday. <laughs> Did you fish yesterday? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I was just editing all day, but yeah, I'm stoked, dude. I can't wait. It takes a long time to edit. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It does take a long time to edit. But I'm excited because it's like three miles an hour today. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good day. Yeah. High tide is around noon. I, I, depending on what happens in the next two hours, I might call it six. <laughs> he probably is actually sick. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to tie on a jerkbait real quick and uh, start making some casts. We got like, what is it, maybe 7 o'clock right now, 5 hours until high tide and then I'm going to fish through it. There's an app called fishnotify.com, well not an app, it's a website that you guys can check out and it actually gives it a fishiness score, quote unquote. And today's fishiness score is 78, which is decent or average. I've had some good days when it says that it's not gonna be that good. So we'll check it out, but a little bit more on that app or that website, keep calling it an app, but that website shows a whole week forecast and it allows you to plan out what it's gonna be like. It gives you the wind, gives you the tide, Gives you a lot of information and you can sign up for alerts on your own beach. But anyway, I'm gonna tie on a rig and let's fish. We're pretty much fishing all incoming tide. My buddy Bruce is over there. You guys saw him earlier. Let's see if we can't get something to play, something nice. Maybe a striper, but of course the target today is surf perch, but I can't help it. But start with the Kalisa because it's not gonna be windy. Last time I was out here, I filmed an episode using the Okuma Rockaway SP models. Today, I only brought the Hawaiian Custom. I just really wanna maximize and maximize my casts, get really far out there, especially since it's low tide. The structure is farther out and these holes aren't quite filled in, so let's see how it goes. Since it's low tide, I'm gonna be focusing on the cuts a little bit more than I usually do. I'll usually fish the sides of the cuts, but today I'm gonna focus on the edges of the cuts, which the cut is where you see all that dark water. It's basically a channel in between the sandbars. I'm gonna focus on those on the edges. the striper come in through the cut into the sandbars to feed. But I'm gonna cover a lot of water today. I definitely geared up a little bit more mobile, just with one rod, a backpack, and then my camera gear. Just covering that water, cover the water. I'm seeing a lot of sand crabs, which is a good sign with perch or striper. Big wide open sandy beach. Today the wave power from Surf Dash Forecast is 400, which is definitely more medium strength in terms of sweeper waves and it'll stay about 400 all day. So. It's a pretty prime day to fish. I typically like when high tide coincides with the morning, but today coincides with the afternoon. So we'll see how that's gonna be like. It's supposed to be bluebird skies today. All day, no clouds. So we'll see how that affects the fishing. So yeah, I'm just talking to Bruce, just about life and uh, what we've been up to. He actually paints cars for a living and that's how I know him. I used to be a car salesman slash 
sales manager for 10 years, internet sales manager, at a Honda store that he used to work at. So we've known each other for, for probably a good 12 years now. Really cool dude. But anyway, he's gonna work that side of the cut and I'm gonna work this side of the cut for a little bit. I caught a striper here two weeks ago and it was in another episode. But I caught it on the right side of the cut. Right now I'm curious about the left side of the cut. So I'll give this some cast, see how it goes. I'm not really sure which way the current's going. So it's a good idea when you have two people work two sides of the cut. That way you can put a pattern together and hopefully duplicated at a different cut. A lot of the times, let's say on a hot surf perch bite, you'll find them on the right side of the cut. And every cut you go to, there's more fish on the right side versus the left side. And that's due to the current pushing bait or food into that pocket. So we'll see if they're on the left or right sides of the cuts today. If I catch one or he catches one, we'll be able to tell. But I like the movement in this, in this left side right now. It's pretty nice. It feels like the current's going that way. So I think Bruce is in a good spot. When it comes to throwing a jerk bait, I'm really patient with it. I'll literally give it hours and hours without a bite. And I know that takes a lot of discipline to do, especially if you've never caught a fish on a jerk bait, but you've caught fish on a Carolina rig to keep on hucking it over and over and over and have nothing to show for it. But I promise if you've never caught one on jerk bait, but you want to, I say it's so worth it. When you get the strike, they hit it and they peel like a freight train. But that's why I can cast this for hours and hours because I know what it feels like to get a really big bite, to get a striped bass, a halibut or a surf perch on a jerk bait. But when it happens, if it's ever happened for you, man, it's a glorious moment. When you get that type of reward, you'll be able to throw it a lot longer with no results. So who knows, I could be throwing this for the next hour and a half, two hours, but at least it's incoming tide. So these fish could be feeding. So any given cast can be a bite. Just don't lose hope. Some people call this the, the lure of a thousand or a million casts, but it pays off guys. Your biggest fish will hit this thing. I usually tie on the Carolina rig when either it gets too windy or I have to leave in a couple hours. And I want to scratch some fish. Because sometimes they just don't want this jerk bait. But some days it can get crazy. I had one session on a jerk bait where I caught so many, I was more surprised when I brought the lure in and I didn't have a fish. It's like expecting to get bit. That's such a good feeling when you find a nice pocket of fish like that. The only reason we're giving this a really thorough investigation, this pocket, is because I caught a striper here a couple weeks ago. But also it was high tide back then. So that's another variable. Problem with today though, is there's a ton of nasty decomposing jellyfish in the water. You can actually smell it in the air. <laughs> and I'm getting out my lure every maybe sixth cast. But when I'm fishing the sandbars, it's even worse. All right, so the game plan, since there's two of us, is Bruce is gonna hop on the Carolina rig. And I'm gonna keep throwing the jerk bait. That way we get two different presentations. Cause essentially this whole next stretch of beach, maybe for a third of a mile or so, is all sandbar area, which 
I think Bruce can definitely get out to the first sandbar, and that's where these perch have been concentrated. So we'll see. We'll see how he does, and I'll keep throwing the jerk bait. And uh, if he starts catching a bunch of perch on a Carolina rig, it'll be hard for me not to switch. Oh yeah, Fish Notify also says that the bite window is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They have an algorithm to figure out when's the most likely time these fish will be feeding based on moon cycle and tide and currents. So hopefully the wind stays down around between 10 and 2. That way I can keep throwing the jerk bait. It's currently 8.20 a.m. So we've been fishing for about an hour now. In about an hour and 40 minutes is that bite window. I'm gonna keep working this trough like a tube of toothpaste. So you guys can see this is all locked in by a big sandbar out there. Normally I wouldn't give this a ton of casts, but this trough is really big, so you never know. But it is incoming tide, so we'll see if we can't get lucky casting into no man's land. But if I were throwing the Carolina rig, I would aim for the other side of that sandbar. But also what has me thinking they could be in this trough, is just the fact that I've seen so much sand crabs here. That gives me a better feeling. But I'm gonna work this area pretty quick. I see a little bit better water up front, up ahead of me, right around this point that Bruce is at. What do you guys think? Do you like <laughs> listening to somebody <laughs> think out loud while they're fishing <laughs> and try to figure out a bite? Does that help you guys? Leave it in the comments. Because essentially that's all I'm doing, is just thinking out loud, trying to put it together like a big old puzzle. It just dawned on me. I used to keep a reef aquarium, and when things died in the water, they would excrete ammonia into the water. And that's pretty toxic to fish. Unless they have a, they're really hardy fish and they have a high tolerance for it. And the reason I say that is because of those jellyfish that I talked about earlier that is ending up on my hook. They're decomposing in this water and I can totally see it. I can see little black specks everywhere of rotting jellyfish. I've covered a lot of beach so far, probably two and a half, three miles so far and I only had one bump on my jerk bait. So this jellyfish die off could be causing these fish not to be in this shallow stuff with all this ammonia. All the jellyfish skeletons are all on the side of the beach. I think that might have to do with the poor fishing right now. Otherwise, everything looks so good. Just to check in, it is currently 9.36. We've been fishing for about two hours now. Bruce went back to the jerk bait, and you would think we'd pass by some jerk bait eaters already, whether it's perch or striper. I don't know how much farther down the beach I'm gonna fish, so we'll see. When I feel it's time, I'll throw on the Carolina rig and I'm sure I can catch some perch. But just like earlier this week when I went out, all my fish were pretty much at the end of my cast really far out. I just feel like these fish don't want to be in close with all this dead jellyfish in the water. Here's a clip of the jellyfish from last time. You could see their skeletons 
and they're rotting flesh all over the beach. It's a good thing there's no smell of vision because you guys would definitely smell it. But yeah, this water is probably packed full of ammonia. All right, so here's the plan, guys. <laughs> Bruce and I have been scratching our heads for the last uh, hour and a half as we've been working our way this way. He actually ended up switching back to the jerkbait. And then now I think we've gone as far this way as we want to go. So now we're going to work our way back. It's an hour until the major period. I'm going to switch to the Carolina rig and he's going to stick on the jerkbait and uh, we're going to work our way back. So Carolina rig for me, jerkbait for Bruce, and we'll work our way that way. Yoo! Per usual, I think I switched at the perfect time because the wind is starting to pick up a little bit. Feels like it's about three miles an hour and picking up. Bit of a breeze. But according to the Windy app, the wind should actually die down around high tide, which is pretty unusual. It is a prefrontal conditions. It's gonna rain tomorrow a little bit. So that's actually a good thing. Fish usually bite before it rains. So I really think it is because of the jellyfish that these fish aren't uh, quite cooperating. Bruce just got that one small one. We did see a gentleman on the beach catch another one. But I'm confident in the Carolina rig. I'll just get back into some fishy pockets and uh, they're gonna eat it. <laughs> they will eat it. I just gotta cross over the right sandbar that they're feeding on. There's a fish. There's a fish. Right there. It's a good one. Oh, he came off. Ah. This is about where we saw the guy catch a fish too, so. Give this spot a few casts. But yeah, that was at the very end of my cast. So, yeah, I think my theory is right that those fish are farther, farther out. No hits up close. Just doing the same old thing. Walk, cast, walk, cast, walk, cast. Just had that one bite so far. And I made a few casts after that. So there wasn't really a big school there. I'm trying to land on a school, guys. It's about 20 minutes till the major period starts and it's a four hour window. So I like my chances. We're looking good. To at least bag a bunch of good sized perch. There's a farther sandbar that's just outside my range, but I'll try see if anyone's home at that sandbar. Nope, nobody home. Keep her moving. Nothing in close at all. Yep, and guess what's on my lure? Rotting jellyfish. Ugh. That's gross. It stinks. I have to wash my hands real good when I get home. Gross. Yeah, so those jellyfish are everywhere. It's covering most of our beaches right now. The water looks fine. And I bet probably in a few days, once that jellyfish really starts to decay in the water, we're gonna start seeing that yellow foamy water. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but sometimes the foam gets real thick and yellow. What's happening is that ammonia is turning into nitrites, which is basically like fertilizer. So usually what follows a big die off like this is going to be an algae bloom. And if the water is warm enough and there's enough sunlight, get a red tide which is uh, 
very unpleasant. Red tides can last weeks until all of that nutrients dissipates from all those dead organisms like jellyfish. Or for example, if a lot of anchovies die, same thing. So much nutrients in the water, the plant life and algae really have a, a great time. Bruce just pointed out there's yellow water right here. Yep, yellow foamy water. And those bubbles stick around, they don't really pop right away. Yeah, you can see it right here. Fish, fish, fish! Good one. But yeah, there's that foamy water right here that's just yellow. But Bruce also pointed out that there's a bunch of sand crabs here. And that one actually hit pretty close. Not too far. Oh, that's a nice one. Woohoo! That's a jumbo. Yeah. She was feeding on those sand crabs. This is gonna be super satisfying on so many different levels. Number one, because when you only catch one fish all day, that one fish is very satisfying. <laughs> and then on another level, I'm gonna eat with my hands. And this is gonna be an homage to my Filipino heritage. <laughs> uh, this is how we did it at home for a really long time. No silverware, pretty crazy, but uh, it's also very satisfying, super tactile. <laughs> but especially when you make those slits in the fish, oh, you could hear that crispiness. Mm. Yeah. That garlic in the sauce, super simple sauce. All it is is soy sauce, onion, garlic, and some tomato. And I left the tomato pretty big just so I can pick it up and eat it. And some lemon. Perfect accompaniment to fried perch. Usually we make it like blackened, filleted, and it actually happens to be the next day, which I like to process my fish the next day just because that meat gets a chance to rest. Because when you fillet it the same day, 
no matter what species, it's kind of more gummy meat. Uh, but when it's all relaxed, it comes off the bone really easy. Uh, but I guess if you're frying it, it doesn't really matter too much because you're not taking it off the bone. But that is some good meat right there. Mm. So satisfying. Mm. Just salt, pepper, flour. Make sure your oil is nice and hot, 350 degrees. And then as it cooks, it begins to climb even more as the moisture gets pulled off the fish. But when you do it this way, you really get the most out of your fish. Man. Mm. Sometimes even, I'll leave the fins on fully because these fins get really crispy. Listen. And you can eat them like that. After taking those bites, I kind of wish I left the fins on. Not kind of, I do. <clears throat> but in terms of yesterday's bite, it was really odd. Usually I'd be able to count on quite a few more fish, but it's funny because all those jellyfish all over the sand Hmm. led me to believe that there are really a lot of them decomposing in the ocean, which I found out when I brought up my, my lure or my Carolina rig and had those uh, jellyfish decomposing on it. And it was funny when I caught this fish, I was actually noticing the yellow foam that I had just been talking about the cast before. So we'll see what happens with the bite moving forward. As I mentioned, while we were out on the water, we might see a red tide, hopefully not. But when there's a lot of nutrients in the water, it just really is not good. I did think though, too, I was like, man, is this fish safe to eat? <laughs> I would imagine so, but I would think that at me but I know it kind of made him proud too and then with the head you have so much meat still that you normally don't get just if you fillet it like even this little nose piece right here right at the nose where it meets the mouth you can just bite that and just eat it if it's like crunchy enough look at that. the teeth all of it Just so crunchy. So that's like a testament too to how important it is to hot, have hot enough oil. If your oil is not hot enough, it's just gonna take longer to cook one, B, be a little too soggy, and C, it'll basically just soak up that oil. But when your oil's hot enough, the meat, the flour, it doesn't really soak up that much oil. So it's definitely not as greasy as you think it would be. <laughs> and that's another benefit to eating with your hands is you could really pick through everything. There's the eyeball. Fresh fish, man. 
nothing like it. This time yesterday, this fish was swimming around. And other than having the meat all relaxed, having that perch pouch and being able to let that meat drain of its blood definitely makes the fish a lot less fishy. So that's really where that fishy flavor is. It's in the blood of the fish. So if you properly process it, you shouldn't get any fishy flavor. Mm hmm When the collars, this is the muscle that directs that pectoral fin. And then that sauce I have as a dipping sauce. Oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> so crunchy. Mm. If you guys haven't tried it like this, you definitely should. A little on the messy side, but if you just want to let loose, have a drink. Mwah, it's nice. <clears throat> Maximize your catch. That's what it's all about when you fry a fish whole. I think this is better than like some of the restaurants you can get a whole fried tilapia. Surf perch is way better. And then once you finish one side, you can basically just peel away the spine and the rib cage, just like a trout. And you have that whole other side to work on. Grab a little tomato, nice little finger full of rice. Mm. There's that whole other filet. But overall, yesterday I covered about two miles one way, two and a half miles one way actually, and then two and a half miles back. So. It was definitely a grind and we covered a lot, a lot of water. And usually the pockets that we would fit or that we did fish should have held fish. They were just the right structure. The tide was right. The wind was right. The wave power was right. 400 wave power is more than doable. It was actually not really pushing us back when we got into the water. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that those jellyfish are definitely making the environment a little less than desirable for those perch to hang out and be in because we even saw nice sand crab beds where these fish should have been just eating. I fished all the way up to high tide. Hopefully with this storm that's coming, should be actually coming tomorrow it'll start to really clean that water back up and hopefully push nutrients away. However, I think that since we are getting rain on land, it might actually push nutrients into the ocean. So we'll see, but that's the beauty of the ocean. It's so unpredictable. You can have all of your data, your tides, your wind, your, wave power, swell, swell intervals, have it all mapped out. But then the ocean throws another variable at you. It doesn't hurt to have all that knowledge. It's actually beneficial to have all that knowledge. So when things do line up, you're mostly going to be out there, most likely to be out there. But <clears throat> that's the challenge. And that's why I love it. I have to say, this has been one of the most satisfying meals of the year. It's already April, but there's going to be a lot more fishing to do. More perch to catch, more halibut to catch, 
more striped bass to catch. Mmm. Rockfish season's opening too. If you want to see an episode where I broke down the basics of surf perch fishing, I'll go ahead and leave a video right over here that you guys can check out. And if you guys want to see how I analyze the water, I'll leave a link right there. We'll catch you guys on the next one.